known as a career guardian angel. She's on a mission to empower cycle breaking women, often from immigrant families. This is why she is with us today. Obviously, she's working with all of you. Now, who is Anna? With her expertise in neuroscience, behavioral science, and advertising, Anna helps her clients build powerful personal brands that lead to greater influence, impact, and success in workplace. So with Anna, what you're going to do is you're going to say goodbye to workhorse days and hello to more money, freedom, health, and happiness without selling your soul. This sounds amazing, amazing to me. And you guys, we get to talk to Anna today. You get to hear a lot about her. So thank you for coming, for joining me, Anna. I really look forward to this conversation. I'm so excited to be here because Evelina, I know you work with people on getting back on track with that American dream, you know, and I love that you cover all these different facets of life that obviously contribute to people's success, happiness, relationships, which is also important. And me, I play a smaller part in that I focus on career and the career's impact, but it is absolutely about that American dream. So I'm so excited to talk to you about that today. Absolutely. I don't know that it's such a smaller thing, right? Because I'm sure as you're coaching, um, you're touching on lives overall, right? Because like, how much time do we spend at work? Most of our days, right? Most of our life. We're either working or sleeping. (laughs) <laughs> and, and, and hanging out with our family sometimes exactly and as you know you know mindset um nervous system regulation boundaries all of that you know it spills all over each other actually one of the funnest thing is when i see my clients helping their parents with their careers oh, demanding awesome. what they're worth preparing for interviews getting better salaries it it blows my mind so you're absolutely right it does impact a lot I love it. All right. So why don't you tell us, tell us a little bit more about what you do. What does that look like exactly? Yes. So the main thing that I do in working with predominantly immigrant women is helping them to succeed in the corporate world and do it in a way where they're not sacrificing that happiness or health. Okay. Because we didn't come here. The American dream is not all work. There needs to be some play. There has to be some joy. There has to no be kidding. fulfillment, you know? Yes. And so the way that I help women succeed in the corporate world is by helping them with personal branding, corporate politics, relationships, networking, all these things that women like us are never taught. Most women are not taught, but especially not immigrant women. They don't teach this in college, high school. They don't teach this basically anywhere. And why don't they teach this? Because a lot of companies and brands benefit from passionate, ambitious, intelligent women like us doing the most in return for the least. So I see myself as kind of a person that brings justice to the world where I get, I help my amazing immigrant ladies get recognized and rewarded for the incredible value they bring to companies and they bring to the world. So that is what I basically do. (laughs) I love it. Okay. Tell me a little bit. How did you come across this whole issue, right? Like, obviously you were working in the corporate world. You've already said that. And I think I've read it too, but why this? Like, why is this your mission? What happened there? You know, I guess it, it does boil down to me. <laughs> you know, I did, you know, I was raised to be hardworking, ambitious, humble, beautiful qualities that my par- my Polish parents gave me. And while that worked in school, it did not work in the corporate world. What it gave me, instead of these rewards and success that I imagined in my head, you know, if you work hard, you'll get everything you want. Uh, No, what it got me was I was overworked, underpaid, invisible, stuck, and sick, Evelina. I ended up Mm. getting sick from working so hard. And because I wasn't seeing the results, I did what most of us immigrant women do. I worked harder. Yeah. I didn't pause to question like, why is this not working? Or is there a better strategy? I, I worked more and eventually I worked myself until I developed something called PCOS. For the listeners who don't know what PCOS is, consider yourself super blessed. For those ladies who do know what PCOS is, we know that it's hell on earth. Hormonal Mm. imbalance, anxiety, depression, acne, hair falling out, periods that are so painful that 
you're literally on the floor and wanting to die. <laughs> so um, long story short, you know, I got myself in my own career hell. And then when I realized, when I looked around, the hardest thing that I had to realize was that I had put myself in that position. Mm -hmm. And that was so painful because I was so angry for so long. And I was like, this company is this, my boss is that, the corporate world, America. But then I realized no one forced me to do the things that I did. I did them. But that also showed me I had the power to do things differently. And the reason why this is my mission now is because I created my own success story. Within one year, I got promoted several times, changed companies, became the head of the office. So I call myself like a little Cinderella from intern to office head in nine years. Mm -hmm. um, after all the struggle, if, if finally the abundance gates opened for me. And not only that, but can you imagine that my PCOS also vanished? Mm, interesting. As huh? my career took off, my health improved. And that's not a coincidence, Evelina, as you know, as a life mm. coach, right? Absolutely. So that's why I was, so then, you know, I finally made it to the top. I, I was the queen. I was on my corporate throne. And of course, probably because I'm an immigrant woman, I couldn't just chill and relax. <laughs> I looked, I looked around me and I saw, Hey, Anna, this was not a unique experience for you. I actually carried a lot of shame. I thought I was the only one that struggled. I thought it was my fault and everyone else has mm. it figured out, but me. But I realized when I looked around, a lot of my sisters were struggling, especially my immigrant sisters. So that's when I decided to try to share some of my knowledge. And that's how that evolved into being the career guardian angel now. I love it. Love it. So tell me where it comes to us specifically, us immigrant women, what are the biggest issues that you see with us specifically? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to give credit to my dad for this one but it is what I call workhorse syndrome. Mm. I remember one day I was crying to my dad about, you know, I'm not getting paid more. I'm doing the work of five people. They don't, they don't appreciate me. And he said, you know what, Anna? And in, in Polish, he said, you are the horse. Do you know why you keep getting more work into your wagon? Because you keep carrying that wagon up the hill. And instead of getting rewarded with a carrot, you're getting slapped in the butt. And this is the PG polite version that I'm sharing right mm, here. I can imagine. But yeah. I was devastated. <laughs> I was crying and I could not mm. believe that my dad said this to me because once again, that was, it was that personal radical responsibility. And so he said, you're being a workhorse and they will never treat you differently as you continue to be a workhorse. And that was such a rude awakening. And that is something that I see in 99% of my immigrant women. We do the most. We, um, we go above and beyond all the time. We perform miracles. We're so dependable. We start, but then we start to neglect ourselves. We start to burn out. It just, yes, it never works out for us because let me tell you, nobody respects the workhorse, sadly. Yeah, if the uh, workhorse doesn't respect herself, no one will respect yes. her. Yes, it starts. It starts with the self-respect. Yes. You know what's coming to my mind is what I was dealing with in my um, career, but also what I see with my clients, and it's the extremely low self-esteem, the continuous comparison between us immigrant women and American women, and then well, where it comes to American men, it's like we are on the bottom 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 in that you know kirky mm -hmm. and so there is like in our minds we are not as good as american women definitely not as powerful and confident as american men but we bring so much to the table yes That's right so the reality true. is it's like come on we have to see we have to see our own worth just like you said we have to be the ones that see what we're doing to ourselves and so you're the ones you're the one that's showing right your clients tell me what are some of the things that you do with your clients to help them see that mm -hmm. they need to change their own perspective mm -hmm. so i have to be honest we immigrant women we we resist this very much because hard work is something that we lean on for safety. 
it gives us a sense of control in this scary world, especially maybe being the first woman in your family to have a job like that, being the first woman in your family to move to a different country, to be living in America, et cetera. Yeah. Um, To have a profession speaking in English. So hard work is sort of that security blanket. So we immigrant women tend to be very resistant to it. Um, So what I do is I ask questions, you know, as a coach, ask questions and we dig deeper to shine that flashlight and show, well, who is benefiting from that? Mm-hmm. what did this extra two hours yield in terms of the impact of the report? Well, how much better was this report because of the extra two hours? What did you miss out on when you spent these two hours? What do you think you could have done during those two hours? How would you feel if you spent those two hours going on a walk, reading a book, go, meeting up with a friend, calling a friend? So it's those kind of questions that kind of make this iceberg fall because, you know, there is that resistance to seeing that this pattern has not been serving us. And then the second part is there's fears of letting go. Sure. So even when women realize it and they're, they're screaming at me, they're like, Anna, I see this. I see how this is not benefiting me, but we are so scared to let go of the hard work. We're so scared that we're going to get fired. We're so scared that, you know, it's already not working when I'm working hard. How is it going to work when I stop working hard? But that, and that is actually where the magic lies, because when you stop overworking yourself, your true talent gets to shine. You get to work on more impactful things. You get noticed, then you get the opportunities and the rewards. And that cycle goes the other way, but you have to take that scary leap. It's very scary, but very rewarding. Mm. Yeah, this is, it's really incredible how many parallels as you're describing it um, are between what you're doing and what I'm doing too, right? The, the, the questions and then basically just, yeah, taking a little flashlight and shining on these dark areas that are dictating our behavior. And yet it's like we're choosing it, but not consciously really, because we don't understand fully the impact of what our choices give us. Do you have like a um, success story, like your favorite success story you can share with us? Mm-hmm. Um, yes. So I have a client who um, also an immigrant. She comes from Serbia. She's seen a lot of scary things, sure. you know, in terms of war, losing everything. And she's actually the only one that left Serbia, came to America and started fresh on her own. Mm -hmm. And, you know, through grit and determination and hard work and ambition, she had found some success. You know, she had found a company that she was working for uh, a role that that suited her skills and and um, paid her appropriately. And so everything was going well, but she was constantly worried about job security. And this is the most, one of the most brilliant people I've ever met. So it was so funny, not funny, but like, it's so crazy for me to look at her and say, what are you scared of? You add so much value every single day. Also, one of the things that she noticed is people were stealing her ideas. People were not letting her speak up. Even her boss would sometimes actually in, in a covert way, tell her to shut up. Mm. Um, and therefore she was worried that her job stability was at stake because no one saw all the value she was bringing to the table. So working with me, that's how we, we discussed confident communication. We discussed how she can be more assertive in a way that feels comfortable for her. Cause we don't want, you know, where I'm not over here telling people to do crazy things that are totally outside of the realm of their comfort, but how can you speak up for yourself in a way that works for you? We don't have to be that confident American man we can still be assertive immigrant women in our own flavor, our own power, our own energy. So she started doing that. She started putting together, she started doing simple logical strategies like writing down her ideas. And then she started using relationships. So she started talking to people even above her boss about the work that she's doing. And then the final thing was when she finally let go and stopped doing as much. She Mm -hmm. was finally ready to let go of the workhorse. And that was the scariest week of her life. And then the best thing was when two weeks later, she said, Anna, I'm doing 50% of what I used to do. And everyone is so happy with me. 
it was shocking. She thought she had to do 120% all day, every day. She leaned back every day. Her focus was to lean back and to stop looking for more work and to lean back and focus on connecting, focus on communicating um, some ideas that she has. When she did that, she was so much less stressed. People started noticing. And then funny enough, her boss in a meeting was like, actually, so-and-so would like to, has had a great idea. I would love for her to share it. Mm. He stopped stealing. He noticed he can't steal and he, he allowed her to shine. So Beautiful. complete 360, already an amazing, powerful woman, but, you know, making her, her time at work so much less stressful and therefore in her regular life, she can focus on other things instead of worrying about getting fired. Amazing. Amazing. That's the impact of working with a coach, right? Like when you think about the value of what you provide for this one person, just this one person, how her life literally has changed yeah. thanks to the, um, well, the work that you have provided her with, but also the work you have done together, right? With her, because she had to mm -hmm. actually go out there and, and do it on her own. But thanks to your guidance, she was able to do so. The value, it's it's priceless. It's priceless um, work. But then I think to myself, how many of my listeners are like I used to be? And maybe you can relate to where when we think of working with coaches, we think to ourselves, yeah, no, that's probably not for me, right? Or even if they explore it and then comes to the financial investment, they're like, yeah, no, that's too much. I could never spend that much on me. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to that a little bit? I think you're absolutely right. Um, you know, as immigrant women, we're not taught to invest in ourselves. We're not taught to ask for help. Asking for help oftentimes feels already like failure, doesn't it? Yeah. But when I look back to when I was suffering in my career and it was three years of hell that I described. So the short thing that I described, that was actually three years of that. No promotion, getting sicker and sicker and my confidence going lower and lower. Um, I think back like, oh my God, what could have happened if I had a coach, if I had a career guardian angel, if I had an Evelina, like what would have happened? How could I have dug myself out of that faster? How much more joy could I have experienced? How much less stress would I put my body under? Yeah. You know? So yes, unfortunately I do agree that we're not taught to do this, but I think a lot of immigrant women are also cycle breakers. We are yes, here we to are. do things differently. Absolutely. Yes. And so oftentimes, you know, just because we weren't raised to do something or we don't have an example doesn't mean we don't do it. Right. It might not feel safe, but we do a lot of scary things. So I think, you know, investing in yourself, having a coach for a lot of people could very well be that cycle breaking thing. Yeah. And it's like you said, right? Like that's what we do. We break cycles. Right. The fact that we live in a different country, the fact that we move away from the familiar culture, from the language and everything that comes with the safety zone. And we plant ourselves in this different world and we're surrounded by people who think differently. We start different right mm -hmm. way of thinking as well as a result of being in this like almost like a different mental field. There's so much that we already do. There's so much courage that we show in our own path, right? What I find myself doing with my clients is looking back and recognizing those elements, right? Look at what you have accomplished. Have you ever celebrated that? Mm. Right? Have you ever actually looked back and said, oh my Lord, <laughs> right? And then, okay, here's another thing. We have this tendency we immigrant women have this tendency to compare ourselves to Americans, American women oftentimes, right? And in work environment that oftentimes reflects as not speaking up, right? Feeling disempowered in many, many situations. I remember working with someone who was not the most like, emotionally intelligent person on the planet mm -hmm. but very bully bully like in personality and because of my insecurities I did not know how to stand up to this person I yeah. had no idea how to do that 
Mm-hmm. And today when I think about it, it's like, oh my goodness, there's, you don't have to like stand up and fight, right? That's not mm-hmm. what you need to do here. You can just ask, are you okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> empower with care mm-hmm. rather than become the strong big person that now be I don't know attacking verbally or or do right other things get yourself to the level from which that person is operating from um so I'm I'm curious about this do you have any thoughts on how Americans perceive us immigrants Hmm. in the workplace Hmm. Oh, cheeky question. <laughs> Let's um, go. <laughs> I I generally think that immigrants have a very good good reputation for being ambitious and hardworking. Um <laughs> <laughs> no tell me let's let's have an honest conversation um, let's go this is an honest podcast tell me all the things. I do think you know like with anything that's different I do think that there is you know maybe hesitation or not knowing how to connect with someone um that's from a different culture it's so funny because I was born here but I still feel the difference of being an immigrant daughter of immigrants you know, you don't feel that same immediate camaraderie that I would say you do feel with your immigrant friends, right? Where it's that immediate connection where you're just vibing on the same level and energy. I would say that in my experience, there there still is some of that. There is a hesitation and I would say it's harder for people who are immigrants to develop I would say friendships in the corporate world I think we're appreciated for our strengths and how we add value as a colleague I'm not so sure about genuine friendships Mm. that's how I would put it so we're useful but do they want to invite us to a barbecue I don't know I don't know maybe it's case by case but my experience is we're more seen as for what we can provide, but maybe that's also us coming in and trying to prove ourselves by what we can provide instead of leading with our personality and our hearts. It could be a combination of both. Yeah, it could be a combination of both. I have, I've been exploring that idea of connection, right? And I've realized that oftentimes when I was interpreting somebody's behavior as negative towards me, they were actually trying to connect to me. Right. Mm-hmm. I remember going to a party and someone was saying, um, when they found out that I'm from Poland, they said, Oh my gosh, do you know any Polak jokes? <laughs> and this was my like, I think like eighth or ninth month in America. I had no idea what he's talking about. I yeah. never heard of Polak jokes. It would never even come to my mind, right? Like, no, yeah. that he would ask me that question. I was completely oblivious. And um, yeah, I remember being confused about it and not making it a big deal, but everyone that was standing around us at that moment grasped air, was terrified that I could get offended, right? Mm -hmm. Now, looking back, I realized that what happened in his mind was like Poland, Mm -hmm. Polak jokes, Mm -hmm. there, I can connect, I can say something that, right? This was the familiar world to him. And I was a stranger, but there is that point of familiarity. So let's talk about that piece. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm glad I didn't get offended. <laughs> I'm glad that this is how it all turned out. But I, I think how often has this happened in my life where I assumed that mm-hmm. someone is judging me mm-hmm. or making assumptions about me, judging me where I'm judging them, actually. I'm the one judging Mm -hmm. right assuming there's a fear there right yeah yeah Yeah. and how do I show up when I'm judging when I'm expecting the worst Mm -hmm. right I know I've done it millions of times in my journey I remember um, for a very long time being in this like very ego-based space right where it's like you don't know who I am and my English is so bad, I can't explain it, so I'm not even going to try. 
Mm. right but in the same time it's like well you don't know who I am I'm not gonna connect to you it's like how how was that helpful Mm -hmm. I felt like a stranger I felt I don't like I don't belong and I was coming off from from my ego space so I wonder how often does that happen right even in a work environment Mm -hmm. right another thing that I know that also happens is that we get humbled by the difficulty in our journey right so it's almost like you step in you're trying to prove yourself and like first of all you don't know what you're doing because everything is so brand new you feel like you're most of the time you're just winging it because you just don't know what you're doing you're just hoping that everything's gonna be fine but your most important mode is I want to prove myself. I do not want to lose this job, Mm -hmm. right? And then like we step in that mode. That's where we start and we just keep on going. This is is what we learned. And unless we talk to you and we stop ourselves, we will be constantly trying to prove our worth. And we'll be working harder and harder and harder because the the more you work, the better you get, right? So you don't have to. Work is hard, but if you keep on taking on more jobs to prove yourself, well, yeah, you will continue on going at 100 miles per hour where you could could be going at 25. Mm -hmm. Yep. Unbelievable. (laughs) No, so um, I wonder how many of my uh, listeners right now are like, "Mm, this sounds interesting. This sounds like me. Like I might need help from Anna. Mm-hmm. there might be quite quite a big crowd listening and thinking this right now tell mm-hmm. us tell us what do we need to do to get a hold of you um so if you would like to get a hold of me i am very present on instagram as well as linkedin and thankfully my immigrant name you know there's not many of my names out there so if you just search for anna lakomi l-a-k-o-m-y you probably will see a blonde uh Polish girl and that's prob- most likely me you're probably in the right spot and if you start seeing a lot of sassy things about corporate politics and some emotional things like today I just posted about you know what immigrant mothers go through and how they leave everything behind to give their children everything you can expect a lot of sass and a lot of emotionality on LinkedIn and Instagram from me I love it Love it. That's life, right? So yeah. tell me a little bit more about the um, uh, the immigrant mothers. Like, mm-hmm. what is the thing that you see that they struggle with the most? Mm-hmm. So I'll tell you what inspired this because it's the popular Barbie movie right now, and um, and funny enough, the creator of Barbie, Ruth, is from it has Polish heritage, and her daughter's name was Barbara, Barbara, mm-hmm. and that's why mm-hmm. she named the Barbie Barbie. But anyway. So towards the end of the movie, when Barbie meets her creator, um, the creator says this one line that kind of took me out emotionally. She said, "Um, we mothers stand still so that our daughters can look back and see how far they've come. (laughs) I'm getting emotional again. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, and I think especially for, for people who either, you know, left their country, left their mothers or whose mothers came here to give them this, this life. You know, there are sacrifices involved. There are hardships. There are struggles. And so being able Mm -hmm. to look back and see how you or the next generation has, how far they have come. Like there's so much, there's like, people have described it as like guilt, sadness, gratitude, beauty. There's just so many mixed emotions, I think, when it comes to mothers family and being an immigrant there's just so much there's so much pressure to be successful but on the other hand there's so much gratitude and so much love so I think yeah it's just our our unique experience has like these deep deep complex emotions I think yeah and big emotions they're big emotions right like to have the courage to show up every day working as hard as you do knowing that your family is you know across the world and you do not have the support like other people do around you knowing that you always feel like you're less than 
Mm-hmm. And yet you have done some incredible things and yet you're not even seeing that either, right? It's mm-hmm. like your brain is deleting the incredible achievements you have made. And yet you're like, yeah, whatever. Everybody does this. That's what I was telling myself. Oh, yeah, everybody has a master's degree. Everybody does. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lie. But then, you know, hanging out with immigrants, you're hanging out with incredible people who mm-hmm. have done that, right? So then again, you're not comparing yourself to majority of the world that you are actually interact with, interacting with. You're comparing yourself to other people who are incredibly strong, have these incredible stories, feel these huge emotions, although don't really know how to process them consciously. Or how to talk about it. How to talk. Oh my gosh, that's a big one too, right? We're just not being taught any of this. Mm-hmm. And those are the skills that allow us to build the dream life consciously mm-hmm. on purpose. Because it's almost like when I think overall of Emek, it's like, yes, there's that first generation that comes and struggles so heavily. So the second generation can rip the benefits. But I'm like, hey, stop the cycle. The first generation can also have fun, mm-hmm. also appreciate, right? Also enjoy the positive 50% of this reality. How about that? <laughs> And let's show our children, right? The ones that we're doing this for. Let's show them that life can be fun. And we do not have to be workhorses because I am sure that your story, right? Your work ethic is because of your parents Mm -hmm. and what you have seen them do on a daily basis, Mm -hmm. right? You're just observing. And they didn't celebrate themselves. They didn't celebrate the amazing things that they've accomplished in a foreign country without the language, without any support or safety net or money. You know, they never celebrated themselves. So like, how can we celebrate ourselves now? Why do we have to wait until we're perfect? And we've checked off every list, which let's be honest, it always grows with every achievement. Like you said, we delete the prior ones and add three more. How can we start celebrating that now? How can we start living that joyful American dream life now and not just focus on the struggle? Because it doesn't have to be a struggle. No, it doesn't. doesn't. So tell me, let's answer that question. How can we start celebrating? Tell me. Hmm. I think I think it's twofold. I think uh, the one, it starts for yourself. So I'm very big on whenever one of my clients texts me about anything, big or small, I'm like, congratulations, proud of you. How are you going to celebrate yourself? So (laughs) I'm kind of a broken record at this point, but because of our, how we were raised and the lack of safety we've experienced as immigrants, our brains are wired towards achievement oriented dopamine. So we only receive the dopamine once it's done. We don't receive the dopamine along the journey. So we have to reprogram that. And the one way to do that is by celebrating ourselves. It can be as simple as saying like, um, you know what? I have a client right now. She's going to take a a voice lesson. You know what I mean? Nobody has to know about it, but she's celebrating herself taking a voice lesson. That's how you start to rewire your brain away from constantly chasing the next achievement, but actually enjoying your life along the way. And then the second thing is, I think we need to bring this culture of celebration out. Ask your mom, how can she celebrate herself this week? Ask your partner, ask your colleagues, ask your children. I think, Mm -hmm. you know, we, we have to create joy. And one of those ways is acknowledging what's beautiful already and what's beautiful about you, what's beautiful about what you've done. And so I think let's make celebration contagious. I love it. I love that idea. Let's celebrate ourselves if you want to more publicly. I mean, that's very bold for immigrants, right? Patting yourself on the back, that's a big no-no, but how how can we break that chain, that break that cycle? And then how can we inspire someone else that's like, oh my God, if she can celebrate herself, Oh my gosh, maybe I can celebrate myself. Absolutely. And, you know, there's also that element of um, the competition between women, mm-hmm. right? And that it, all of that stems from that comparison, not feeling worthy, this and that. But when we celebrate, we're forcing ourselves to see the good, right? So um, 
what are you celebrating this week? Tell me. Mm, juicy, juicy question. All right. It is just Tuesday, but let me think about the past week. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, I'm going to go back 10 days. So last Saturday, I did a workshop about conquering your inner critic, um, which is very important, as you know. Um, and I have to say, after several years of being a coach, having coaches, working on my own inner critic, working on my hyperachiever tendencies. Um, I have to say this was the first time I, I created a workshop and I was not stressed. Oh, that's amazing. The old Anna would be worrying, sweating, over planning, over preparing, um, literally having anxiety for weeks. This newer Anna, this Anna that's been working on herself um, came peacefully joyfully I was ready to serve I wasn't gonna prove anything Mm. and ironically I was able to focus on them I was able to detach from focusing on me and my mind drama yes I just got goosebumps so thank you for letting me celebrate that because yes and that was a big change to kind of what we're taught to do right Absolutely. So yes, I'm celebrating that I am releasing a lot of my own workhorse tendencies, even as a businesswoman and someone who's, you know, public facing, I'm releasing the need to be perfect. And I'm releasing the need to overcompensate and overprove myself and finally feel like I'm enough. And what I'm giving you is a gift and it is enough. I love that. What a beautiful set of thoughts you just said. (laughs) I love it. And yeah, congratulations. That's huge. I mean, it's just the proof of the work, right? That is the value of the work. After you look at your own stuff and you keep on processing these um, heavy patterns that you have developed in the past, that's the value of it, is that you can show up and be of service and really connect to your clients and do that work that you're already doing from a different level of service. Beautiful. And that's my American dream, right? My American dream was not to be stressed and overworked and anxious. My American dream is to use my gifts and talents and serve because that's what makes my heart happy. And that's what it comes down to, doesn't it? For so many of us, yes, I can definitely relate to it. But it's like when we are in service, that's when we really feel aligned and happy. And it's like, this is what I was meant to do on this planet when we're not stressed and we're aligned so at the end of the day that is that higher value of the work that you're providing your clients with and the person who has finished whatever program that you have taken them through right that is the value of it the impact that they have on the world the next level impact that's amazing like the ripples that you create with your work and then your clients create right with their work beautiful thing well very proud of you uh and i'm so happy that we've connected i know we've talked already about you being on this podcast more so i'm looking forward to having you again um just because of the time restriction we're gonna end here but i promise my listeners you will be back because we have already <laughs> had some amazing conversations and i cannot wait to continue these remember you guys i am going to put anna's information into the description of the show all the links will be there to instagram to her facebook linkedin all of that will be there so wherever whichever platform you're using you will have an easy way of connecting if you just look up um, at the podcast description and i thank you so much for being here i am just thrilled that you are here for the immigrant women that you're helping them truly create um these new beautiful beliefs and embrace the next level life that they can create for themselves we know this this can happen and i'm just i'm just so happy that you're here that you're in this world doing this (laughs) beautiful work thank you so much evelina and thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to share my story share my work and i look forward to talking more with you and on so many other beautiful topics that are related to our beautiful immigrant life so thank you so much thank you